am going to introduce our first speaker of the day. So you can reference your uh, booklet at any point. Um, there's a lot of different information that our speakers did share with us in here, as well as additional information about the Chamber of Commerce. Um, of course, there's some pens on the table, so if you want to take notes along the way, you're welcome to do that also. Um, so we did have a, a quick shift in gears, but quite frankly, it's to our advantage. Um, that Adam Payne was not able to join us today, but uh, Deputy Administrator Elaine Krause from Sheboygan County is going to give us an economic um, update on the county. So welcome, Elaine, and thank you for being here. Well, thank you, Deidre, for the introduction. Um, Adam sends his regrets that he is not able to be here. However, he is home battling a nasty, nasty flu. So I think it's all for our best interest that he is not here spreading that. Um, so I am here pinch hitting on his behalf. For those of you who don't know, my name is Elaine Kraus. I am the Deputy County Administrator. Um, I've been working for the county for just under 10 years, um, and I am pleased to be here this morning with all of you. So we will get started. The county employs over 850 people working in 19 departments, administering over 200 programs and services. Our total budget is $167 million. Of that, $52 million is property tax levy. The balance is state and federal revenue, private pay, and fee or service charges. Um, I know this is in your booklet and it is a little bit small, um, but the this these graphs are demonstrating the breakdown of the tax levy by major categories and then also the total expenditures by major categories or departments. So please feel free to look at that at your leisure. Of our departments, the most well known would be our Health and Human Services Department, Transportation, Sheriff, and the Rocky Knoll Healthcare Center. And those comprise nearly two thirds of the entire county budget. The county has an impressive fiscal track record healthy reserves, and an excellent bond rating. For 2022, there will be a 1.14 property tax levy increase. And over the last 10 years, the average annual levy increase has been just 1.22%. For 2022, the tax rate will decrease 19 cents, which is a 4% decrease from last year. The county board and staff are fiscal stewards providing quality service in a responsible manner. COVID. <laughs> I would be remiss not to talk about COVID since it is still very prevalent in our lives. After two years, it's safe to say it has impacted all of us personally and professionally. And I think it's also safe to say we are all sick of it. <laughs> Unfortunately, cases, active cases and hospitalizations are at an all time high. And the Omicron variant is more transmissible than measles. So now more than ever, we need to do our part, and I know you've heard this all before, but please, 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 stay up to date with your vaccines, wear a mask, and stay home when you are ill. We owe a debt of gratitude to our public health staff who are burnt out, but continue to work tirelessly. They are contact tracing, correlating data, working with our schools, businesses, and healthcare centers. They've lost a, launched a testing site and they are providing vaccines to those who may experience barriers. Thank you also to the Chamber for continuing to provide updates to the community and hosting Zoom meetings with our public health staff. All right, on to the more upbeat stuff. <laughs> so next I'll be going through um, our 2021 accomplishments and the things that we are most proud of. So despite the ongoing pandemic, we still were able to accomplish a lot together this past year. Ryder Cup. Wasn't that something? Sheboygan County was in the global spotlight this last September. We had upwards of 45,000 daily visitors at Whistling Straits, 27 hours of live worldwide broadcast coverage, and an estimated $135 million economic impact on the region. The Sheboygan County Memorial Airport was able to showcase its new terminal and customs facility, which was a great public and private partnership between the Wisconsin Bureau of Aeronautics and the Kohler Company and others. During the event, the airport supported over 1,200 takeoffs and landings. Countless organizations and people are involved in an event of this magnitude. From the county, we had health and human services staff, transportation staff, and sheriff's department 
working closely with the Ryder Cup officials for months leading up to the event. They were involved with security, traffic, food safety, and COVID mitigation plans. In addition, there were over 4,000 volunteers who stepped forward to help. All involved contributed to a highly successful event that we can all be proud of. Similarly, Road America hosted a NASCAR race last year over the 4th of July, drawing over 100,000 spectators. These events require extensive planning and coordination, and we are grateful to all of those involved who bring these vibrant events to our community for residents and visitors alike to enjoy. Next up, another great milestone that I think we all appreciate, the Highway 23 expansion. Last year, the portion in Sheboygan County was finished, and the remainder of the project in Fond du Lac County will be finished this year. This project, for those of you who don't know, was originally enumerated by the state over 30 years ago. At that time, it was estimated to cost 42 million. Due to the delays and inflation, now the project is estimated to cost 170 million. With that being said, I think we're all still grateful that it is happening. Um, this project will significantly enhance safety and support economic development. And for anyone who travels on that road, I think we're all in agreement that we're, we're glad it's getting done. In addition to the highway itself being expanded, the old plank road trail that runs along the highway is also being expanded. And that will now run from the city of Sheboygan all the way to the city of Fond du Lac. Speaking of the transportation department and transportation system, our staff maintain 450 miles of county roads and 152 bridges. Including the town roads, state highways, and interstate miles, they have 2,172 lane miles of maintenance responsibility. To put that in perspective, that would be the equivalent of driving from Sheboygan to San Francisco. So next time it snows, please have a little bit of patience for our guys out there clearing the clearing that roads. For those of you who don't know, uh, we also own our own asphalt plant, which provides essential cost-effective material for our county and municipal road work. The current asphalt plant, I won't tell you how old it is, but I will tell you it is older than I am. It needs to be replaced. It is old and we are unable to get parts to fix it. So we plan to be replacing the asphalt plant next year, which will continue to allow us to have a, a more efficient plant and provide cost-effective road construction for our community. Next up, Rocky Knoll Healthcare Center. For those of you who don't know, that is located just off of Highway 67 between Plymouth and Elkhart Lake. Despite the ongoing pandemic and staff shortages, we are proud to say that Rocky Knoll has again earned the five-star rating from the Wisconsin Department of Health Services for Centers for Medicare and Medicaid for the fourth consecutive year. We're very proud of this. It's a huge accomplishment. Uh, this rating reflects the dedication of our staff and commitment to quality. In addition, we have a number of facility improvements planned for the year ahead. We are striving to tackle the workforce shortage with enhanced recruitment and retention initiatives, such as higher wages, paid training, quarterly bonuses, on-site daycare, tuition reimbursement, and student loan repayment programs. Even with all of those wonderful benefits, we are still struggling, as I'm sure many of you in this room can relate. Uh, we must maintain minimum staffing levels in order to care for the residents. And the more staff we have, the more residents we can accept, which reduce the burden on our hospitals. So as many of you are in that same, same boat, um, recruiting staff will continue to be an area of focus and an ongoing challenge for the foreseeable future. There is a new educational facility at the Sheboygan Marsh. Construction of the Kohler Center for Marsh Education Building uh, is nearly complete. For those of you who are, have never been to the marsh, I encourage you to get out there. Um, it's located just outside of Elkhart Lake. The new building, um, one of the wings will house the YMCA Outdoor Skills Center Marsh Education Program, which services over 1,000 students annually. And when that wing is not being used for educational program, programming, it will also be available to rent. The other wing of the building has new uh, bathrooms and shower facilities for the county's campground. 
this new community amenity is another great example of collaboration between public and private partnerships, including the Kohler Company, the YMCA, Friends of the Marsh, and others. American Rescue Plan Act. Um, some of you may have heard Adam present on this at a previous chamber event, um, so I'll keep this high level. Uh, the American Rescue Plan Act was enacted in March of 2021. Sheboygan County is set to receive 22.4 million, and the city of Sheboygan is also receiving about 22 million. The county established six task forces um, based on the community need. Those task forces include affordable housing, behavioral health and crisis response, broadband development, child care, transportation, and workforce development. This collaborative approach is seeking community engagement and input, and the task force members represent dozens of organizations from the area. They have been meeting since August and are formulating right recommendations to be considered by local elected officials, including the county board, city common council, and other local leaders. And we have until December 31st of 2024 to obligate those funds. All right, next up, um, our SCEDC partnership. Um, continuing on the theme of collaboration and partnerships, um, next I'll be highlighting some accomplishments related to economic development. Um, in the past, when Adam has given this presentation, he's asked the SCEDC staff to put together a list of notable achievements. And this, page, this list is pages long, um, and I would love to touch on all of them, but I promised to be more concise than Mayor Pullman, so I'll try to sum them up here. <laughs> Um, and for any of you who would care to read it in more detail, um, it is a handout on your table. So please feel free to take that with you and, and look at it at a later date. But here goes the, the high level. So expansions and remodels. There are 15 projects listed. They run the gamut from large manufacturing to small businesses. Many of these companies have been here for decades and continue to show their commitment to the community by growing here. Of note, one recently announced is the $136 million expansion at Mill Poor Sigma. Business and community developments. There are 19 items listed. They include development in areas critical to quality of life, such as childcare, housing, major road work, recreation, renewable energy, and retail. These initiatives span all corners of the county and certainly give us all a reason to be excited. One that I'm especially excited about is the expansion of Bookworm Gardens. Openings. 21 new businesses are listed. Most are restaurants, housing developments, retail, or arts and education focused. These new investments will enhance our community and continue to set us apart from others. The list of grants is also lengthy. There are over 20 grants and they total hundreds of millions of dollars coming to Sheboygan County. These dollars are sustaining our businesses during economic hardships, and they are also bolstering nonprofits, our educational institutions, the hospitality sector, and conserving natural resources. We could all take pride in these accomplishments. None of the things I mentioned this morning would be possible without partnerships with the SCEDC, the Chamber, individual businesses, nonprofits, and other government entities. We look forward to another prosperous year working together. Thank you all for the contributions you make to our community. All right, thank you so much, Elaine. Um, for our second update today, we have Mayor Ryan Sorensen. He uh, was not able to join us in person uh, as he is representing us in Washington, D.C. this week, but he did uh, bring in a video. Good morning, everybody. My name is Ryan Sorensen, and I have the privilege of serving as the mayor of the city of Sheboygan. I apologize for not being able to be in person today, but I still wanted to ensure that I provided an update at the annual Economic Outlook Breakfast. First off, thank you so much for being here today and being active members of the Chamber of Commerce. Your involvement in our city makes Sheboygan stronger. 2021 has been a comeback year for our community, and we are still fully recovering from the impact of the pandemic. However, moving forward, myself, Administrator Wolf, and the entire city council are committed to having a strong and vibrant business community. Today, I just want to share some highlights 
that you've probably heard about and what our vision is for the future moving forward. One of the key indicators for the vibrancy of any city or business climate is access to affordable and quality housing. As businesses grow across the area, these employees and their families need places to stay. The city recently completed a comprehensive study that underlines the need for more affordable and accessible housing. You've probably seen the new Oscar apartments that have sprung up on South 14th Street, and these are 250 new units that will be going online this year. Many folks have already signed leases before this project has even been completed. We are also working on redeveloping the former Kepsel property. General Capital is the developer that we're working with on this project. This will bring over 100 new units with 85 reserved for affordable senior units and 16 live-work units with a total investment of $26 million. Additionally, we are working on revitalizing 14th and Illinois Avenue with the Commonwealth Development. This will be 48 affordable units with investments totaling around $12 million and rents ranging from 350 to 900 per month. We love partnering with our many nonprofits like Partners for Community Development on a Veterans Affordable Housing Project on North 13th and Erie Avenue. 44 units will be valued at $12 million of investments in rents ranging from $350 to approximately $1,000. We are also focused on acquiring land so that we continue to build. Moving forward, we're going to be purchasing the old Juckums Hall on North 15th Street for affordable housing and to give this neighborhood some much needed attention. As you hopefully see, we are laser focused on housing. And now we need to focus on filling our vacant spaces and vacant buildings as well, which is important to the success of our community. You've probably heard the exciting news about the redevelopment of the former Shopco store, which will now be Hobby Lobby and Ross Dress for Less. We are working on re revamping this site over the winter, and we are excited to have more retail options right here in our city. Additionally, we recently awarded bids in, for the renovation of the former Save-A-Lot store, which will now be the new senior center, Uptown Social. We've secured a 2.7 million HUD loan, and we'll be also utilizing some ARPA funds for this project as well. Sheboygan also has a great asset in our business park on the far south side of the city, and a lot of work is being done there. We are also working with an Appleton developer to construct a 100,000 square foot spec industrial building in the South Point Enterprise campus, with a future expansion of doubling that square footage as well, valued at approximately $8 million, and construction will begin this summer. Recently, the completion of Sheboygan's first urban solar farm was established in our business park. Alliant Energy completed its work this past December, and the solar array will be functional this month and will provide one megawatt of renewable energy. Investments in renewable energy are key to energy independence and future growth. City staff is also working on other South Point Enterprise campus leads related to a data center and a new food and beverage manufacturing project as well. So stay tuned for some more exciting news to come. Also, everyone knows that Sheboygan is the Malibu of the Midwest and we are a premier tourism destination. We had some of the best tourism numbers on record. Our tourism room tax collection was about was above 50% over last year, and the Ryder Cup helped substantially in our third quarter, and we also exceeded budget projections for room tax collection in the first and second quarters as well. We all also know just how important strategic planning is for the future success of any organization. That is why the city has retained Baker Tilly to lead the development of our new five-year strategic plan for the city. In the coming weeks, a community survey and focus groups will be held to gather public information and input to guide our plan forward. We truly value your input and ideas during this process, so watch for more information and please feel free to reach out. Now I know I wasn't able to cover everything today and there are so many other great, great and exciting things going on, like the Million Dreams 24-7 Child Care Center getting established, the game board growing in our downtown, we're updating our outdoor recreation plan, making significant park improvements and major investments in our road and infrastructure as well. However, there are still many challenges ahead that we still need to tackle. We need to recruit more people to our community, address our workforce, workforce shortages, we need to build more affordable housing. And I know working together and strengthening our partnerships, we can get it done. Sheboygan has so much opportunity and potential, and with your help and commitment to the community, we can keep Sheboygan moving forward. 
The city is open for business and the best is yet to come. Thank you so much. Thank you to Mayor Sorensen. Um, although he is not here, we have a number of our um, city folks with us and city administrator Todd Wolf. So thank you, Todd and Chad and Derek. And I apologize, your name was escaping me, um, but Garrett for uh, participating with us today. So um, next, yes. We um, are going to welcome um, Mayor Randy Meyer from the city of Sheboygan Falls. Um, after Mayor Meyer's presentation, we'll take a short break just to give everybody an opportunity to stretch their legs, to you know, grab coffee, what they need to do, and then we will resume the second half of the program. Um, so welcome, Mayor Meyer. Well, thank you. Um, my wrestling coach always told me, if you pin them in the first period, you don't have to worry about the second and third period. So I, uh, I try and keep things uh, things short. But uh, first, I want to thank my entire city team and uh, Administrator Shad Tempest is here today. Um, it's a great cooperative relationship, which that cooperation also extends through the whole county. Um, Recall it's a, a number of years ago we did that cooperative agreement in Sheboygan County that the county chamber was a lead on. And, I, and I'm glad to say that cooperation still rings true throughout um, our county. Um, doesn't mean we're not friendly competitors and have fun with each other once in a while, but I can tell you when I talk to other municipalities across the state, because I'm privileged to be on the League of Municipalities board, there's not that same level of cooperation in every county, so I think that's something we really need to be proud of here. Um, in Sheboygan Falls, um, we like to say we move at or above the speed of business, and that just about killed us last year because <laughs> we, we all of a sudden found out we were really, really busy. But um, Vision Park is going really well. Uh, Polyvinyl is in the process of adding a a new facility there right now. Um, Fifth Color completed their facility last year. And if memory serves me right, Chad, I believe we did the ribbon cutting for the Morrell Rock Line um, building right at the beginning of, uh, last, of, of last year. So a lot of good things going on in Vision Park. That is um, started with Tax Increment District 3 about 30 years ago or in that range. And now we did an overlay district of Tax Increment District 5 there and we amended that district um, this year to help out a subdivision on across from uh, Falcon Falcon Way subdivision and on, on PP so that subdivision will be starting and we added 18 acres across the road from Vision Park which could be an expansion of Vision Park could be a subdivision if we got another set of acres to go with it to give um, two ways in and out to that area so a lot of good opportunities that was land added to the city and add it into that tax increment district amendment. And speaking of tax increment district amendments, if you have a project you want to do in Sheboygan Falls, Shad and I would really appreciate if we could do an amendment in the spring or the summer, not the fall right at the end of the, uh, right at the, end of the timeline. It just gets a little stressful when uh, you know you have to get this done and you have three days to get it done. Um, but that said, we did get it done um, because we're wrestlers and that's what we do. <laughs> um, so. Uh, other things in Sheboygan Falls, uh, other subdivisions, we have uh, a good chunk of land on the west side of the city that has some great possibilities. Uh, we have an infill subdivision, Norgard Meadows, which, uh, which is really a nice thing to, sometimes you gotta look like, where are some little pockets of land in your city? Not always expanding outward, but make sure you're, you're taking care of what's also in your city. Um, and then the Vintage Willow subdivision that's by Hillcrest is, uh, getting closer and closer to being at capacity. Um, I, so subdivision growth is something, a priority we focused on and we think we've got some of the answers now and we just have to implement, this is the year of implementation on those. Um, so we'll bring more housing online. Um, apartments, uh, our Tannery Falls project uh, downtown. It's kind of interesting because you, know, you, you take a little heat on Facebook sometimes and you want to respond, but you're like, like no, I just let, let it go, let it go. But the, the question on Facebook is, who's gonna rent those apartments? And what's gonna happen there? Well, the answer is 72 people will rent those apartments because they're full. 
Put it on Facebook. It's true. <laughs> so, uh, but but really, in my mind, that's a gateway to our downtown, and it's what's allowing going to allow our downtown to be vibrant for years to come. Just inserting 72 units of apartments of higher end people that are going to naturally walk and shop and eat in our downtown. Um, and with that in mind, we added a an excellent Mexican restaurant. I just shortened it to El Rancho's because maybe I can have a hard time pronouncing the second word, Viero. I don't, I don't, but El Rancho's, that's, I've, I've been there a number of times. R really nice, really nice atmosphere. It's really nice to see what used to be, and when I was younger, it used to be the Villager, vibrant restaurant for years in Sheboygan Falls. And now it's nice to see that vibrancy back with El Rancho, so we're very happy about that. Um, what I know is the Old Pine Lodge is coming back online. It's going to be the, see if I can get this right. Well, there's a number in front of it, then it's Gastro Pub and Tap House. And I always forget the number. I don't know, Shad, do you remember what the, the number is? 18, 2873. 2873, thank you. Yeah, I, I knew you came for a reason. Thanks, Shad. Good, <laughs> good, good teamwork. Good job. <laughs> uh, the dog does <laughs> yeah, right. The dog doesn't drive. That is true. <laughs> uh, so we're, we're really happy to have that come online. So, you know, a year ago, I would have said a problem we were having is lack of restaurants. And, and now we seem to have solved that, that problem to an extent. And um, the former Richards Building, speaking of restaurants, is for sale. They've done some work in there. Is there work that needs to be done yet? Yes. But there really is an opportunity for someone to create something really nice in that historic building. So we're, we're really happy to be working with uh, Dane Shakalinski. I think I said your last name right, Dane, too. I'm learning, so I'm getting good at this. Uh, but uh, but he's, li he's listed that, and we're really happy to be working with someone that, that we know, like, and respect listing the property. And um, we've gotten tours of that property. Because uh, one thing we do in Sheboygan Falls, we work with our, our local chamber Main Street program. And monthly, Shad and I meet with a group of them and have an economic meeting where we, we really have come to a great comfort level of respect and trust and confidentiality where we maybe don't share 100%, but we're probably sharing 90% of, of stuff with them. There are certain things if someone says this is confidential, we don't go to that committee meeting and talk about it. But I would say it's been a group of about 10 of us that Shad and I feel very comfortable telling them exactly what's going on, where our challenges are, and they feel comfortable as well as telling me, like, I, I love Justin Richardson's in that group, and sometimes Justin Richardson go, Mayor, I disagree with you. I'm like, great, because that's what I need to hear. You know, having 10 people that say, Mayor, you're really great, and I agree with you all the time, that's not helpful, but respectfully telling you they disagree with you on an issue, that's helpful, and, and Justin does it probably the best of anyone in, in there. So, I mean, that's the type of things we have going on in Sheboygan Falls. We are, Shad and I, you know, we, we always say, you know, if you want to do something in Sheboygan Falls, you meet with Shad and I, and we get the ball rolling. Um, and then we bring in the rest of our team. Our, our council is, is always very cooperative with us, works with us in economic development. And we always tell people, if, if we tell you, like, don't worry, the council's on board, that means don't worry, the council's on board. Um, so, again, my coach said keep it short, so I, I hope I scored a pin here in the first period, and I'm just going to cut off there. But any questions, feel free to contact either Shad or I. We're always happy to talk. So thank you for your time, and I guess you can go to break now, right? <laughs> uh, we will go ahead and uh, move forward with the second half of our program. And um, our next speaker um, had shared with us last year in true Sheboygan County fashion that he was going to be retiring, and within just a couple of months, um, he had to jump right back into his role as the um, interim village president for uh, this, the village of Oostburg. So, Alan Rubel, welcome, and thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Well, she was right. I'm not supposed to be here today. Uh, but there was a family medical problem with the uh, gentleman who uh, ran for president and won. Um, I was actually in Florida at the end of November when they called. And I turned it down the first time. I turned it down the second time. I turned it down the third time. 
and uh, we were in Florida on vacation because we've been going back and forth and it, uh, my wife and I had been married 50 years so that was kind of the deal we would you know travel and be in Florida after the fourth time somebody called my wife said why don't you just do the damn thing you know you want to <laughs> so that's why I'm here today and uh, I'd like to give you uh, some quick updates of uh, what's been accomplished in Oostburg in the last year. Viking Masic, which is a global packaging uh, company, they make packaging machines. They have a $4 million expansion they just finished. Uh, they had larger office space, and it's already full. Uh, they also have extra warehousing, and which is also full. They also bought land east of their main building along I-43, and it's uh, a holding pond. And what they did is they turned it into a park. They did some landscaping. They put in some paths uh, for their people to uh, walk around the uh, lunch hour and also uh, for the people in Oostburg. They also bought six acres west of them for future expansion. When it came to Oostburg, they had a, I think it was a 35,000 or 40,000 square foot uh, building. They probably more than doubled that right now. So what's interesting uh, with Viking, inside their building, they put in a fitness center. They also put in an Irish pub. <laughs> and this Irish pub, I, I think it's once a week, uh, their employees can get a beer or maybe two, not more than that. And they hold client meetings there, which I think is, uh, you know, kind of unique. Then we'll move on to Master Gallery. Uh, they put on a $21 million, 110,000 square foot expansion, which is due to be completed in the second quarter of this year. They now have a total in Oostburg of 285,000 square feet of buildings. And they still have room for a third expansion. So we're hoping that happens in the next couple years. We also have a new subdivision. It's called Settlers Point. And the first phase in Settlers Point is going to be two uh, apartment buildings with uh, 10 units each. Uh, eventually, there will be six of the ten unit. Also included in the first phase is single family and side-by-side -side condos around a pond. There is also five single home lots uh, that will be uh, available uh, for uh, people. That is the first phase. I think there's around 70, can be 70 lots in that uh, subdivision. That's in the east side of the village. On the west side of the village, uh, Westfield is almost full. I think there were 60 lots. I think there's only four uh, left in that area. The village also has some major road projects happening. We have a $1.2 million interceptor sewer on North 10th Street, which is a county road going out of town. Uh, that's going to be completed in 2022. Then after that, in 2023, we're hoping there they're gonna the county will come in and help us uh, hopefully do the road curb gutter and new sidewalk hopefully that's in 2023 it depends on how uh, busy the county is going to be with that also in 2023 along with that road project we have another area uh, which is Minnesota or KK Avenue on the north side of the village which has some stormwater problems and we hoping to fix that road at the same time as far as other developments in our industrial park, in the last year we've sold 30 acres that the, of land that the village owns. Um, on five acres, Quick Trip is going to be building in the spring. Uh, so we're really excited about that because um, it is really an outstanding company. Then there are 17 acres owned by a private individual in the business park. And uh, hopefully that's about to be sold. Dane tells me it is going to be, and they're looking at a 200,000 plus square foot building on that property. Um, I can't really say what's going to go in there. Hopefully next year we'll be able to tell you what the business is. Like every township, village, and city, roads and infrastructure are the problem. Hopefully 
with a trillion dollar package passed in Washington will get our fair share. One of the main concerns that we have and the townships uh, around us and in Sheboygan County have is fire and EMS. To give you an example, I was talking to one of the town board chairmen and uh, between us and them for two vehicles. They spent over 700000 for an engine. We bought a much smaller vehicle, was almost 300000 so between us, it's, we spent $1.1 million on two pieces of fire equipment. There has to be some help somewhere. We're hoping, and Adam Payne, if he was here, would roll his eyes when I say this. But hopefully that we can work with the county that maybe can be a county fire chief, excluding and naturally the city of Sheboygan, where there's somebody overseeing all the fire departments that people, uh, when they need a piece of equipment, they go to this individual and this county fire chief or district, whatever it is, would make that decision and say, yeah, you need it. Because you know what happens. When one community has a brand new fire truck, the community next to it wants it. That's just the way it is. It's been like that for since the fire departments came into being. So hopefully, working uh, eventually with the county, we can get something done. EMS. EMS is always a problem. It seems they can't get enough people. As an example, uh, Oostburg Ambulance uh, went out of existence because of the amount of people we just couldn't get. And uh, it was going to get very expensive if we did it ourselves uh, and uh, employing people. So we went to Orange Cross. Orange Cross came in, did a great job, and but they also ran, just in the Oostburg ambulance area, 496 calls. That's over 100 more than they did the year before. Orange Cross, as a total, did over 7,600 calls. The problem they're having is staffing. You know, their EMTs were getting $15 an hour, $15, $20 an hour. Would you want to be handling COVID people, emergencies for that kind of money? So these people move on to city fire departments or better paying jobs. So again, I think if we can work with the county somehow and uh, work something that we can, that they can be able to pay their people more, maybe that uh, they, you know, they can buy a vehicle for them, something to help out because there's only one ambulance, volunteer ambulance service left in the county. That's random late. And I know they're having problems. So if they would go out, then Orange Cross has another area to cover. So hopefully, again, working with the county um, in the future, we can work something out. In closing, I'd like to thank the Chamber of Commerce for this opportunity to talk about the village of Oosburg. So I'll see you next year, maybe. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, for our next speaker, we are pleased to welcome Mayor Don Pullman from the uh, city of Plymouth. And as we have poked fun at him a few times today, I will have a sheet of paper if I have to ask you to, just kidding. Thank you so much for being here, Mayor Pullman. Nice to see you. <laughs> you would think that I have hardly anything to say all the time. It's, uh, it's always great to be here and talk with all of our business people and thank you to the county chamber for for putting this on and it's a welcome relief as we're coming out of some of the last 18 24 months that once again we can look to the future and what opportunities lie ahead of us all of that comes with a optimistic outlook that not only the community leaders present to us, but our business leaders. And I would be remiss if I didn't 
ask everybody to check their mail from the last week. Did you get a flyer from Lakeshore Technical College and their workforce solutions? I think that we are fortunate in our small community, Manitowoc and Sheboygan, to share a two-year technical school that is receiving and has received national awards for innovation. They are your partner in business and are willing to work in every way possible to create the opportunity for development of employees that will get on the job and train on the job, come to your facility and be productive. That is the partnership that we all need, especially as the job force tightens and prices increase across the board. We're all experiencing those problems of employment. So how do we reconcile that in our different communities? And of course, partnering is a big part of that. Uh, City of Plymouth is starting the recruiting process again. I didn't think I'd have to do that in my term of a business uh, administrator, utility manager, and we're starting that process actually in February. There's a lot of demands on our different cities and communities that are now reaching out globally, and how do we accommodate those demands from the community as, as a, a business and a city. The city of Plymouth on the southwest side owns 67 acres of mixed residential. End of the month, we will be exercising our option on another 120 acres on the south side of 67 as you go out of town. The opportunity that that gives us for development from multi-developers, we're not looking for one developer to do the whole thing, but to give a variety of opportunity for housing that hopefully will supply workers for all of us. Our industrial park, we refer to it as TIF number four, will be closing in September of 22 or September of 23. We have an election to make on that. We're probably looking at 23 only because we're trying to coordinate, which is very difficult when you deal with state and federal governments to put some of our dollars into a revolving loan fund for expansion of assistance with housing, which we all need, and also the as areas become older, they need more work. Uh, our TIF districts, as all our TIF districts, have facilitated substantial infrastructure improvement, which is one of the key benefits of a TIF, and trying to partner on a timely basis with some of our industry to facilitate their growth and expansion is one of our most difficult tasks. Businesses make decisions, you all make decisions months, six months, a year, things get done. In government, we make decisions and 10 years later, it starts to come about. It's very frustrating for community leaders and to try and 
and say we're going to time this right. Highway 23, that's been going on for 26 years, and it's finally going to get done. We're hoping that that timing, and then we're seeing the phone calls come in asking about opportunities in all of our communities. And if something isn't good fit for us, we pass them on to the next community in the county. It's important that we feed off of each other and we can do that in a very economical way when we have transportation to facilitate the commerce. So <clears throat> none of this is possible without good schools. And our public schools have good records. They're partnering with a lot of industry. We're teaching the skills that are required in a, in a proactive way. And I think that if we continue on that path, Plymouth 12 years ago was the first to partner with LTC. Random Lake just did it a year and a half ago. So we continue to use all of the tools in the toolbox and the spirit of cooperation that was started many years ago is really starting to pay dividends. We can't attract businesses to all of our different residential uh, areas that we're trying to do, our business communities and our manufacturing without the support of all of you to be part of that. So I thank you for all of that. It's something that we work for as leaders at different levels. Take advantage of making that phone call and contacting either us or someone in business or LTC. You will get responses. I think we have all come to the conclusion that we can push the county ahead faster and more productively together. So thank you for today's session. It's a wonderful event every year. I uh, appreciate the invitation and another beautiful, great day, sunny in Sheboygan County. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Mayor Pullman. All right, so we are in the home stretch, and I will try to make it fast because what I have to share is um, can be a little bit dry. It's a lot of information um, from our annual survey. So annually, we survey our business community, our chamber members, and um, you know, ask a, a lot of information. We recognize that in the past two years, there have been 87,000 different surveys um, that we, we have asked you guys to participate in, mostly related to COVID. So we really tried to limit or eliminate any COVID questions from this particular survey to give you all a break. Um, but I do want to say thank you um, for those that did participate. We, um, it's important that we gauge the business community. It's important that we get feedback from you guys on how we can better support moving forward um, and look for holes in processes that we might be able to help fill um, as the Chamber of Commerce or alongside many of our community partners. Um, so we had a diverse uh, group of folks that participated in, um, in the survey this year. You can see that um, financial and insurance, manufacturing and personal or business services were, um, were our top three categories of participation. Um, I won't go through each one because I know you all can read very well, so um, I won't bore you, but to give you an idea of, uh, of the mix of participation, this is what it looked like. Attraction. Um, I can't imagine that any one of you in this room is not having or hasn't had in the past, let's call it 20 years, um, some sort of workforce development concerns, shortages, or issues. Um, so in, in true Sheboygan County form, we do expect that um, our workforce um, is expected to grow significantly. 60% of organizations expect their workforce to grow in the next 12 months. Um, this is only up 1% over last year, but we also know that last year was a little bit of a 
situation that we won't give much mind to. Um, but, you know, for um, for what we're doing in Sheboygan County in comparison to many other communities across the United States, I think it's refreshing and wonderful to see that um, we continue to be successful as a community um, and that we continue to um, look for progress and growth, even despite a pandemic. So as far as the top three um, expected positions needed, it hasn't really changed much over the past, um, I, I will say past probably four, this is my fifth year doing this, so the past four and a half to five years. Um, you know, we still are looking for finance and IT positions, um, business management, and then of course manufacturing and production. And then we ask, um, what what initiatives, what K through 12 talent initiatives does your company actively participate in? Uh, we are also blessed in Sheboygan County with a number of different opportunities to engage with our students, um, K-12 students. We have wonderful programs um, like uh, Junior Achievement, wonderful programs like Inspire Sheboygan County, um, along with a number of other opportunities. Um, so we still see that being a guest speaker at schools um, continues to be um, top of mind. Being a member of Inspire Sheboygan County is also another wonderful opportunity to connect with our next generation of workforce and then um, on-site career experiences. So again, there's a number of different ways, but these seem to be, according to our participation, the top three um, opportunities utilized. And then as far as um, attracting um, new talent to the area, um, many of our businesses are looking at employee referral programs as top of mind, um, digital um, hiring practices, my thing is much smaller than the one on the screen, so imagine that. That or I'm just really old. Um, and then offering college internships. And we know that we bring in hundreds of um, interns and co-ops annually to the area. Um, and this is a wonderful opportunity to showcase everything that we have in Sheboygan County, but also the opportunities, um, whether it be quality of life, whether it be cost of living, and then of course um, the opportunities with our employers throughout Sheboygan County. So um, I'd mentioned that employee referral was the number one um, utilized um, opportunity to attract and um, you know bring people to your spaces. If you notice, only 82.35% of respondents would likely recommend a friend or family member to move to Sheboygan County. This has actually gone down over the past couple of years. Um, and I think it's something that is really important that we pay attention to, especially if you are asking your employees to refer folks, um, but your employees are saying they wouldn't refer their people to come here. Um, that, is, um, that is a bit disheartening. And it means that we've got some work to do um, to make sure that you know that the people that you have in your spaces um, are feeling you know excited about Sheboygan County and what it has to offer, so that they're relaying that same message to those that are important to them. Um, so I think this is an area of opportunity that we all need to really um, pay close attention to and look for new and different opportunities um, to engage our employees. And then retention. Um, our retention um, survey results have shifted just a little bit. We are now looking at flexible work schedules, um, increased wages. I can't imagine anybody in this space is, you know, hasn't heard that one, right? Um, and then, um, of course, professional development opportunities. And in the past, it, it looked a, a little bit different. We were offering different ways to retain our talent, um, but really it shifted to what is it that our employees are looking for? What is it that our employees need versus what we thought maybe they needed? Um, so I think this is also interesting because it tells us that you're not alone. If you're increasing your wages, if you're offering professional development opportunities um, and you're offering flexible schedules, um, then you're probably right in line with most of the people throughout the county. And then remote workforce. Uh, so COVID showed us that, uh, well, actually it didn't give many of us an opportunity, um, but that we um, could work remotely. One thing I did find interesting, if you look at um, current year, so 2021 over previous year, which was 2020, 57% um, in total 
um, are reporting that they have some remote remote workforce versus roughly 50% in the year previous. So although we're two years into a pandemic and it might feel like we've returned back to normal in many ways, even more of our employers are offering remote workforce options. Um, and this, I think, also goes back to the previous slide where we talk about uh, flexibility and scheduling. Um, I think this tells us that um, as employers and employees, we found that you can work very efficiently and effectively, even if you are working from home in many aspects. Obviously, that is not applicable to everybody in the space, depending on what you do, um, but it is, um, it is certainly encouraging. Expected percentage of wage increases. We know that increasing wages is a way to attract and retain talent. Um, more than 44% of respondents have forecasted a wage increase of 3 to 5%. Um, this is up significantly over last year, no surprise there. Um, but more than 70.65% have budgeted for a wage increase overall, and that is up almost 10% over the previous year. But the good news is um, that uh, sales increase year over year is, is phenomenal. Um, so if you look at 2021, there was a 74% um, reported increase in sales over previous year. Um, not surprising, almost 17% reported also no change. So it tells us that in our community um, that it's either sustainable or we're still growing um, uh, at a wonderful rate despite coming into, you know, ending the second year of a pandemic. So very promising for business in our county that the vast majority are reporting positive progress. So optimism in Sheboygan County. So we're paying people more, we're selling more things, so that's the good news. Um, how do you believe your business will perform over the next 12 months? And I kept the, um, the previous years up there because I think it tells a story. Um, if you look at obviously 2022, almost 20% 20 of respondents expect significant growth. Um, but if you go back to um, pre-pandemic value, so think about 2019 where we were at, um, we, are, we are back to pre-pandemic, um, a pre-pandemic space as far as optimism is concerned. So we continue to be optimistic in 2020, a little bit more in 2021, but when you look at 2022 compared to 2019, um, they look very, very similar. And I think that's very exciting for us because um, we're turning the corner and although um, COVID continues to be a thing and we need to be mindful and make positive choices and make safe choices and healthy choices, um, but business is still moving forward and we have a successful community because of it. Overall, 81.69% um, of respondents believe that Sheboygan County's economy will improve in 2022 and that is compared to 69% over previous year. So again, optimism is very high. This is uh, pre-pandemic value as well. Um, so it's exciting to know that we're, we're all excited about what 2022 will bring. We don't say that out loud though, because every time we say next year will be better or this year will be better, um, things go a little bit awry. So we will avoid putting that up. So what keeps you up at night? Um, and there's a lot of information here. Um, but you know, we ask you to rank on a scale of one to ten. What you know, what things in business are keeping you up at night? And um, our top is talent recruitment. I don't think that there's any surprise there. Um, we know that we continue to have talent recruitment concerns. Um, I traveled in the last three weeks um, from one coast to another. So I spent one week in, in Massachusetts and the other week um, in Washington State. So truly uh, from east to west. And I can tell you that there is not a community along the way that is not experiencing the same concerns that we're experiencing. Um, so that is difficult, um, but it means that it's not anything that we're necessarily doing wrong. It's just this is the state of uh, what the the country looks like at this time. What it also means is that we need to think about how do we set ourselves apart and how do we make it look different? What are we willing to do differently in Sheboygan County than what other communities are willing to do across the country? Um, and we do a lot of things already right. It's about showcasing those and making sure people are aware. So second, um, healthcare costs. We continue to see increases in health care and, um, and this you know, adds costs to um, our, you know, not just the employers, but in many cases the employees, which we'll show in a moment. And then um, technology and innovation um, continues to be a concern. And so these are three areas of opportunity that as a community we need to be mindful of and, and start thinking of um, creative ways to tackle those. 
So talking about health care, um, we asked what, you know, how will uh, the changes in the cost of health care impact you or your employees? Um, so we had a, a significant chunk that said they were not affected this year, so that's great. Um, additional costs will be shared with their workforce and then organization will absorb health care costs. So you can kind of see that, you know, as we're paying employees more in many ways, um, the cost of health care is taking that money right back out of their pocket. And, um, and so I think that's something important for us to, to pay attention to and, and maybe have some different conversations with how can we advocate for lower health care costs. But that's just me. What professional development opportunities would you like the Chamber to offer in 2022? Um, so obviously the Chamber of Commerce, um, you know, one of our specialties is that networking and relationship uh, building ability. Um, so 55.7% are asking for uh, more networking and relationship building programming. Um, we expected that to be high because for the past two years it's been a little more limited than it typically would have been. Um, so that's why I think in this space um, bringing you guys together and having everybody with wonderful conversations and laughing and seeing each other smiling is so important. 50% um, are asking for additional leadership and management uh, professional development opportunities. And then almost 36% of respondents are looking for DEIB training or diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging training. Um, especially important when we're looking to retain talent to the area and of course attract new folks to the area. We wanna make sure that we are welcoming, um, that we are inclusive, that we are equitable, and that everybody feels, um, and not just feels, but does belong in Sheboygan County. So top issues, uh, workforce development, obviously talent attraction, recruitment and talent retention, housing, we've heard a lot about that today. Um, affordable housing and more housing um, are the top issues that we see in our community currently. And then support um, and marketing for small businesses. Um, so small business support encourage major employers to support local rather than uh, shopping online, you know, places like Amazon and things of that nature. So, um, you know, continuing to provide support to our small businesses, they are the fabric of our community. Um, and even for our major employers, um, your employees are out there shopping and getting their hair done and eating at restaurants and all of those things. So we need to make sure that those things are sustainable as well. All right, so you told us what was important to you. Um, as a community, you told us um, you know, what sales look like, you told us um, you know, what your needs are. Um, to kind of give you a quick snapshot of things that the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce has accomplished over the past year, uh, we continue to uh, welcome new members to our community. We send out welcome letters. I'm not sure if many of you are aware, but we send out welcome letters to community um, that are moving within Sheboygan County um, on a monthly basis. This gives them um, really just kind of an opportunity to say, hey, we are so glad that you're here in Sheboygan County with us, but also these are the resources that we can make available to you. Call us if you have questions, if you have any needs. Um, you also told us that talent attraction and retention was important. Um, in 2021, we brought via, um, well, we did it, we did it in three different versions. So hybrid, we had people in person and then we had people fully online. 1,400 area sophomores from Sheboygan area um, high schools throughout the county into um, our Explore Your Future programming. This is an opportunity for them to understand what um, what industry and what opportunities are available right here in our community. We also go through um, you know personality, um, you know kind of profiling, helping them understand who they are as people and what might be good fits for them. Um, so that was a great success. Even though we weren't able to go into every school, we were able to bring um, industry professionals and chamber staff and many of our um, volunteers and partners um, from throughout the county um, into their classrooms via the web or via online. We also hosted 137 interns and co-ops virtually and in person throughout the summer with several activities and events to give them an opportunity to learn more about Sheboygan County and to start building relationships within our community. The goal is that uh, when our employers bring interns and co-ops into our space that they fall in love with Sheboygan County, they begin to grow roots in Sheboygan County, and then um, the next year, if they are up for another intern or co-op, that they would choose to come back here, or upon graduation, they choose to move here permanently. You also told us that diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging was really important. 
And throughout 2021, Chamber staff participated in uh, a number of different DEI trainings provided by UW-Madison, UW-Green Bay, United Way, and other organizations. And we'll continue this journey to learn and be welcoming and inclusive to all. Uh, we also hosted the 2021 Workforce Development Symposium, which was um, focused on DEIB in the workplace and school systems in partnership with Freightert. Um, Andreas Gonzalez came in and, and he has been on the um, DEIB uh, journey in freighter hospital systems for more than 10 years and so he came in and, and brought a lot of really wonderful information to help us how do we get started if you're not quite there yet how can you get started what worked what didn't work um, you know so sharing best practices we also brought in um, Dr. Mutri from 4am consulting Shibori Sheboygan area school district um, superintendents came to talk about their journey in the individual school districts and then of course um, a number of Sheboygan area business and Wisconsin Department of Workforce Development. Um, on top of the Workforce Development um, Symposium, we also hosted a focal point with Leslie Laster on building inclusive workspaces. So we know that this is not enough um, and we're just getting started, but we, uh, we're super excited about you know where we are at, at this space and we will continue to grow in the DEIB space and continue to provide programming and opportunity for all of our businesses and organizations, whether small or large, to have access to um, DEIB initiatives and trainings and support. You also told us that um, small business um, support and marketing was really important. So in 2021, we sold more than $568,000 in chamber cash and chamber members accepted and cashed more than $459,000 in chamber um, in chamber cash dollars. The lo this is a local currency um, that goes straight back into our community. You can't spend it on places like Kohl's.com or Amazon.com. You have to physically go into uh, local businesses and spend those dollars there. So the fact that we're able to inject almost a half a million dollars um, or more per year into our local um, businesses is a wonderful opportunity. This is at 100% free to our businesses and those who are uh, purchasing the chamber cash. So, uh, for example, there are no fees associated, um, and if you come in and purchase chamber cash, we're not charging you a fee to purchase it either. So 100% of this money gets injected back into our small businesses. We also had some fun on Small Business Saturday. Uh, we surprised local diners and shoppers throughout the county, and um, this I, I was able to do this, and I tell you, I left my house at like 6.30 in the morning on Small Business Saturday, and I didn't get home until probably 6.30 at night, um, and I went all over the community and um, surprised local diners and shoppers with free chamber cash. So. This is a way to reward um, a good behavior, right? We want those folks out there spending money in our local businesses. So um, showing up and saying, hey, I'm going to give you money uh, for your purchase today or, or a, a portion of your purchase today. Um, it's just a way to get folks excited about the opportunity. And um, and I'll tell you, the people that were received, the recipients of that chamber cash that day were so excited. Um, it is probably one of the most fun things that I've been able to do in my role as executive director. So um, and, and we try to document all of it via Facebook. So if you uh, don't follow us on Facebook, I would encourage you to do so and watch out for us on, on um, Shop Small Spat Saturday because it's certainly worth your time. We also partnered with Writer Cup to provide additional free marketing to area businesses through the Show Your Ticket campaign. So Writer Cup, uh, we've worked, we worked with Writer Cup for the last few years now although they were delayed by a year. Uh, we continued that partnership and, and they really were wonderful partners. This really was a wonderful opportunity for local businesses. So, um, you know, driving, um, driving Ryder Cup um, visitors to our local spaces and local establishments um, was a great time. And at Sheboygan, the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce members um, can be, um, anyone can be a recipient of Chamber Cash or participate in any of these programs free of charge. Um, it is a part of their membership. Upgrading and updating. I don't know how many of you um, frequent the Sheboygan County Chamber office space, um, but uh, during a time of uncertainty and limited resources, we recognize the need to offer our meeting rooms. So if, uh, if you're uh, business in the area, you know, and many places were shut down or limited um, access, so we were able to open up our conference room spaces 
um, hosting more than 50 different businesses in 2021 alone um, to utilize our, our small and large conference rooms and our upgraded technology. When we saw how important that was, uh, we made the decision to invest even further back into um, the chamber for our membership. So now we have a full um, small conference room with full technology to include cameras, microphones, large screens, etc. cetera. Um, we have further updated our lar large conference room space. Um, and we know that uh, we will continue to see visitors come and use our space as needed for business needs. This again is a free opportunity for any of our chamber members. You call our front desk, we get you scheduled, um, and then you can come in and use the space as needed. So um, that's been a lot of fun. We expect that the, uh, the full updates will be completed in um, first quarter of this year, and we hope to have a ribbon cutting um, and a grand reveal somewhere in early March, late February, depending. Uh, we've also updated the space with some new furniture, so if you're familiar with the chairs and tables we had for, I think they were dated back to 1987, if I'm not mistaken, on the bottom of the chair. I know, 1987. Um, but uh, so we were able to update the, um, the furniture in that space as well. So it is a truly beautiful professional space um, for you guys to utilize. And we're going through a, a fresh paint job currently. So it's a little bit of a disaster, but if you come see us next week, I'm sure we'll have it all cleaned up. And my team is laughing because every day we find something new. Um, but we know that continuous improvement of our programming and space will keep us relevant and, and help us be a better uh, chamber of commerce for all of our members to utilize the tools and resources that we make available. Health and safety. Um, in 2021, um, we hosted th uh, three question and answer updates with Dr. Rai, who is the CEO of Prevea Health. Uh, we also continue to host updates with Sheboygan County Division of Public Health. I believe we had, um, if I'm not mistaken, more than 10 public health conversations um, offered virtually. And we opened these conversations up to both member and, and non-members. Uh, we want everybody to have access to information to be able to ask experts uh, firsthand or in real time um, questions about health and safety. And these were also made available on our website and via social media pages uh, for anybody to share out with uh, their friends, their networks, their employees free of charge. So we heard a lot of information um, from many of our partners from throughout the county and we know that we are better together and I think Mayor Pullman um, said it best you know we we know that we've got a lot to offer but really working together in collaboration and partnership is the only way that we're going to get to uh, where we need to be so uh, I want to say thank you to um, our partners at um, Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation I know Brian and his team are here so thank you uh, for your continued partnership our friends at Public Health have been significant partners for us, um, at other community organizations um, throughout the county, especially as we continue to tackle workforce development and advocacy needs. It's important that we um, stay in constant contact and um, work together to, to do those things. I told you a little bit about what's going on, and um, I, you know we think we think you've noticed as a chamber of commerce um, membership. We think you've noticed the many wonderful things um, that have been happening in our space. We, as a membership, have uh, continued to grow with 63 new members in 2021. Retention. Uh, looks really quite good, 87.5%, which um, is above national average and also um, during a, a time of really crazy uncertainty um, is really promising. We also know that we have a lot of work to do, and so um, we are in the process of completing our three-year strategic plan. Expected completion is first quarter of 2022, so we expect by the end of March that we will have our new three-year strategic plan ready to roll out and share with all of you. New programming is also on its way. Um, we continue to develop and implement new programming. Um, we're in the process of um, additional professional development opportunities to fill the needs of our membership based on the feedback that we've received. So um, as you guys shared with us, that leadership and management opportunities um, is important as well as DEIB. We are in, um, in process of developing new programs that we will hopefully roll out, or not hopefully, I shouldn't say that, hope is not a strategy, but um, that we will roll out before end of 2022. 
and new and, inv and improved um, programming will be made available with our Explore Your Future. Uh, we've already transitioned that focus and Explore Your Future 2022 took place just a couple of weeks ago. We transitioned to, um, we went away from sophomores in high school and moved it down to seventh and eighth graders at the middle school level. Um, we received feedback from our Sheboygan area schools that um, that touching um, giving these students an opportunity before academic and career planning takes place uh, would be more meaningful and would help them better um, be better equipped to make decisions as they go into their ACP um, stuff into high school so we just completed that with 1300 seventh and eighth graders participating on site with our partners at Lakeshore Technical College um, it was a wonderful experience and seventh and eighth graders um, if you are not familiar if you don't have kids I have a lot of them so I know but um, seventh and, talking with seventh and eighth graders versus sophomores in high school is like a completely different space um, and actually is a ton of fun not that high schoolers aren't fun but I've got three high schoolers in the house right now and and I'll tell you that my sixth grader is way more fun than all of the high schoolers so um, so we were excited about that we also, our business education partnership committee um, has been in play for well over, I believe, 35 years, um, if memory serves. And, um, and they decided as a committee that the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce uh, should be the host of STEM Fest annually. Um, so obviously with a number of partners, we certainly can't do anything on our own. Um, but in 2022, Sheboygan County Chamber will also host STEM Fest for fourth and fifth graders. And then uh, we are in process of completing uh, financial literacy programming to help um, support our friends in the high school at the high school level so juniors and seniors to have additional financial literacy opportunity so as they're graduating um, they'll know what it looks like to really buy a car that isn't a Tesla um, or you know when they take out college loans what does it really look like um, you know, because of course, all my kids are going to be YouTubers and like TikTokers and influencers and make millions of dollars, you know, um, every day. So, um, but we we saw the need and and decided as a as a group that it was important that we op offered this opportunity. So, um, we will continue to. Um, you know, provide programming like that so it helps us to have a touch point and it helps local professionals. So when you guys told us that going in and doing on-site career experiences and talking with students at the school level, these are opportunities for you guys to do just that and begin to really build those relationships um, at a younger age. So we may not see it immediately, but over time, uh, we will continue to see those relationships being built and um, and those students just choosing to stay in the Sheboygan County area when they decide to or after graduation. So with that, good news, I will stop talking your ear off. Uh, but thank you for joining us today and thank you so much for your um, continued support of the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce. We would not be here without all of you. Um, I do want to say thank you to Purveya Health. They are our, our annual sponsor of our executive series programming and the Economic Outlook Breakfast is a part of that. So uh, Purveya Health has been a wonderful uh, partner to the Sheboygan County Chamber and the Sheboygan County area as a whole. Um, we are also recording this. We were not able to provide it as a live option this year, but it is being recorded. And within the next week or so, uh, the recording will be made available on our YouTube channel. So if you want to go back and, and listen to one of us talk again, you're welcome to. Or if you want to share it with other members of your team or in your spaces, um, it will be made available in that way. Um, we also uh, created a one-sheeter so you have an idea of some things to look forward to and um, some things that, um, you know, 2021 successes of the chamber. You're welcome to take those sheets with you. The booklets have a lot of wonderful information about, um, about the different communities and please share with your team. So thank you so much and have a wonderful day.